All right, welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're diving into something that feels like it's straight out of science fiction. We're talking about Google's new AI model, Genie. And this isn't about just generating another image or a block of text. This is about creating entire playable, interactive worlds from a single prompt. Seriously, this isn't just another step forward for generative AI. It's a massive leap into a whole new dimension. So. Let me just ask you this. What if you could take any image you have, a photo you took, a quick sketch on a napkin, maybe some professional concept art, and with a click, turn it into a playable 2D video game? Well, that's not a what if anymore. That is exactly what Google's Genie can do. It's the core breakthrough here. So you have to be asking, what kind of AI can possibly pull this off? Let's get into what makes Genie such a fundamentally different beast from what we've seen before. The term Google is using is a foundation world model. And you really got to chew on that for a second. We're all familiar with large language models, right? And diffusion models for images. This is something else entirely. A world model doesn't just spit out static content. It generates a whole system complete with its own rules. It's like an AI that has learned to be its own game engine and its own physics engine just by watching videos. Okay, this is where it gets really fascinating for anyone on the technical side. How in the world do you teach an AI to build a controllable reality from literally nothing? The answer is pretty wild, and it's all in the training. It all starts with a just a colossal amount of data. We're talking 200,000 hours of public gameplay videos, specifically 2D platformers. But here's the absolute kicker. It was all unlabeled. The AI got zero hints about what the controls were. No, press X to jump. No, use the left stick to move. It had to figure out the rules of the game just by watching. And that leads us to the first big technical idea here, the latent action model. So since the AI had no labels for the controls, it had to figure them out on its own. It learned to spot consistent patterns in the pixels, like when a character moves up in an arc, and it associated that visual pattern with the latent action. It's not learning what the jump button is. It's discovering the very concept of jumping as a controllable action that exists within that world's physics. It's basically reverse engineering the controller. So the second piece of the puzzle is how it handles all the visuals. Genie uses a vision transformer, a VIT, to basically chop up each video frame into these compact digital codes or tokens. Think of it like a summary of what's important in the frame. Then a diffusion model, which is great at creating things, learns to predict the next sequence of these tokens. That's how it generates the future frames of the game, making sure they look right and follow the rules. And the third pillar is the architecture that glues it all together. You can think of it as this constant back and forth, a feedback loop. You've got a dynamics model that's always trying to predict what the next frame will look like. And at the same time, you have that latent action model we just talked about, which is figuring out what the player is allowed to do. This interplay between what happens next and what can I do is the magic that makes these generated worlds truly interactive. So if you boil it all down, the training is a two-step process. First, there's this huge self-learning phase. The model just sits there and binge watches 200,000 hours of gameplay to build its core understanding of how game worlds work. Then, once you have that base model, you can fine tune it. You could teach it to only create games in say, an 8-bit retro style, or even teach it brand new game mechanics. Okay, okay, the tech is seriously impressive. But so what? What does this actually unlock for us? Let's talk about the real world applications, because this is way more than just a cool research project. The potential is just massive, and you can kind of split it into two big buckets. The first is for human creativity. I mean, imagine game designers creating a playable prototype from a single sketch, or a student building an interactive science lesson without writing a single line of code. But the second bucket, that might be even bigger. This gives us a way to create infinite, unique training grounds for other AIs. Think about training robots or reinforcement learning agents in countless slightly different worlds to make them more robust. That's a game changer. Now to really understand why Genie is getting so much attention, it helps to put it into context. Let's see how it stacks up against some of the other generative AI that's been making headlines. Let's start with the most obvious comparison, OpenAI's Sora. We've all seen those jaw-dropping videos it can make, but here is the fundamental difference, and it's everything. Sora creates a movie, 
It's a beautiful thing that you watch. Genie creates a world. It's a thing that you play. One is passive consumption. The other is active interaction. And that leap from non-interactive to interactive is, well, it's everything. And if we look at the whole competitive landscape, Genie's unique spot becomes super clear. You've got Sora for video. You've got NVIDIA's GameGAN, which can generate simple game levels, but it still needs a lot of predefined rules. Then you have DeepMind Sima, which is an AI agent that learns how to play existing games. Genie is the only one on this list that generates a complete playable, interactive environment from just a prompt without needing a pre-built game engine to lean on. Of course, we have to be realistic here. This tech is still super, super new. So what are the big challenges they need to solve? And what does the road ahead look like for these world models? So the to-do list is pretty long, but it's exciting. The obvious next frontier is scaling this up from 2D platformers to complex 3D worlds. That's a huge jump. Performance is another one. You need to get those rendering speeds way up for it to feel like seamless real-time gameplay. And of course, there are the big ethical questions around AI-generated content that the whole industry is grappling with. But maybe the most exciting thing on the horizon is that Google has said they plan to eventually open source Genie. And that, that would just pour jet fuel on this entire field of research. And that leaves us with the final massive question that this technology puts on the table. As world models like Genie get better and better, could they move past just being a cool prototyping tool and one day actually replace the big code-heavy game engines we use today, like Unity or Unreal? The line between creating a game and just playing one might be about to get very, very blurry. That's all for this explainer. Thanks for joining us.